My name's David Church. I'm a clinician scientist um, funded by the Academy of Medical Sciences and the Health Foundation. And I'm also an honorary consultant medical oncologist at um, Oxford University Hospitals Foundation Trust. I lead the precision biomarkers sub-theme within the molecular diagnostics BRC theme. And the um, aims of our sub-theme are to really identify and define what we refer to as biomarkers uh, within cancer, but our work has applicability more broadly across human disease. We now know that cancer is driven by genetic changes, so that's changes in our DNA sequence that when uh, present in sufficient numbers cause cells in our body to, to grow and spread without restriction when normally they're very tightly controlled. And we know that some of these genetic changes, errors in our DNA that drive cancer, make it behave differently. So some errors may result in a very aggressive cancer, some errors may result in a less aggressive cancer, some may result in a cancer being particularly susceptible to certain treatments. And identifying those genetic changes and other changes that may be prognostic, so change the likelihood that a patient will um, survive or die from his or her disease, or that he or she will respond better or worse to a particular therapy is a pressing critical need in cancer, as it is in other diseases such as heart disease and, and Alzheimer's, targeting treatments to those who really will benefit from them and sparing patients who don't need the treatments the side effects that the treatments can cause. And one example is we found that there's a particular error in the copying of our DNA. So every time our cells divide, the DNA is copied. And we found that an error in the machinery that actually copies the DNA um, means that, as a consequence, as the cells divide, they accumulate a very, very large number of errors in their DNA. And one may think intuitively that that, that would result in the cancer behaving worse, but in fact the opposite is the case. And we found through BRC-funded work that we've done that both uh, womb cancers and bowel cancers with this genetic change that results in a very, very large number of errors through the tumour's DNA are associated with a very good prognosis in most cases. And that work has, has been put into the clinic now, so we're using this in womb cancer to, to actually identify patients who don't need intensive therapy after they've had their womb removed by the surgeons. Um, and extending that work, we've looked at why this is the case and we found that probably the reason is at least in part that these cancers are, uh, are very uh, uh, obvious to the immune system. So that because they have so many errors in their DNA, it looks like they are targeted more by the immune system. And that's led to another area of research where, where you can use drugs which modify the immune response to cancer to target these particular cancers. And we have two clinical trials which are coming off this work, uh, which are opening this year in the UK, and I'm very excited to say that we'll be participating in Oxford. And this is all thanks to the BRC work. And more generally, this is all thanks to patients agreeing that we can use their samples and their data for research. So this is obviously something that's optional for patients. Not everybody has to do this, but we're completely reliant on patients agreeing that we can use their tumours, we can use their clinical data um, for the purposes of research. It's all very tightly regulated, but unless patients agree to it, unless they tick the box, which says that they give permission for us to do research using their samples, using their data, we are unable to do that. And so all of this work that we've used to advance our understanding of cancer and to get these improvements into the clinic, um, and hopefully you know, we, when we have the results of the trials, we will find that it, that it improves outcome for these patients. Um, it's all down to patients being generous enough to, to allow us to use their data. And, and, and of course, it's also thanks to the funders. So thanks to NHR, NHR funding the BRC, um, enabling us to, to, to perform this research. And so we're very grateful to both for all your support.